Hey. Hey. One time for the real man. Hey, hey. Two time for the real man. Hey. One time. One time for the real man. Bad man, them a six six. Hey. Check. Force. One time for the real man. In no time where my God will be winner man. Hey. If you bring the challenge, it's a situation, but my God is bigger than. Hey. We go dance from America, from Nigeria down to Jamaica, forever and ever. Talk, talk, but whatever. When I wake up, then let them see. All I see yeah, yeah, yeah. The goodness, Lord, uh, my God, spreads around me. Hey. No matter what it is that ever comes my way, hey. hey. I'll surely sing my song. Hey. Oh, everybody, everybody, everybody went bad, man, say. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're welcome to Elevate with PB. I love that song. It says what the enemy meant for evil. God is turning it around for good. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what's happening around you and happening to you, no matter the plots and plan of the enemy, God is up to something. Never put a full stop behind the exploit of the enemy in anyone's life. Never call a bend an end. The Bible says the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You could have put a full stop there, but Jesus turned that full stop to a comma. He said, but I am come. God is always behind the exploit of the enemy. I don't know what you're dealing with. 
never conclude on the matter until God says it's over. You're on to Elevate with PB. Today is going to be something else in God's presence. I wanted to call your friends, call your loved ones, tell them they can't afford to miss this. The golden word one more time is share, share, share. Come on, do that, do that, do that for God. Use your platform for Jesus. Let other people know that something new is about to erupt. This is an epicenter. This is where the Lord wants to touch lives all over the world. Make sure you call your friends. Make sure this program and the viewership gets to the ends of the earth. Invite at least three people today. Come on, let me give you some minutes. While we are doing that, I wanted to holler at me. Come on, greet me. Tell me where you're watching from. I'm broadcasting right now. I'm speaking from Abuja, Nigeria, West Africa. In case you're watching from the Caribbean, from America, let me know where you're watching from. From Lagos, from Ilori, from Port Harcourt, wherever you're watching from, come on, let me know. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> today is going to be very interesting. My guest today is phenomenal. And before I bring him up, because we have a lot of scholarly sons of Gamaliel, <laughs> when I say that, those who know me know what I'm saying. People will think they know, but they don't really know. In Ephesians, the fifth chapter and verse one, the Bible says, as God's dead children, the Bible says we should imitate God. We should be imitators of God. In other words, whatever we see Jesus do, whatever we see God do, God says, I've given you the permission to do it. Jesus is our perfect example. Nobody's our example. The perfect example that we have is Jesus. And guess what he said? He said, I only do what I see my father do. He says, as I hear, so I judge. In other words, I do not judge based on popular opinion. I do not judge based on what the majority is saying. It is what my father tells me that I do. And he uses a word that I love. He says, as I hear from him, then I judge. In Psalm chapter number two, in Psalm two, if you read from verse one, the Bible, the Bible says, who, why do the nations rage? Why do the people plot a vain thing? The Bible says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. In verse 3, the Bible says, they said, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their curds from us. But in verse 4, the Bible says, he who sits in heaven shall laugh. Now the he that is being referred to here is God. The Bible says they wanted, at some point, the rulers of the earth, the demonic powers, wanted to separate the father and the son. And the Bible says God used a weapon there called the weapon of laughter. He that sits in heaven shall laugh. In Psalm 59 and verse 7, Psalm 59 and verse 7, the Bible says, Indeed, they belch with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for they say, Who hears? Verse 8. The Bible says in verse 8 of, <coughs> excuse me, Psalm 59, the Bible says, they said, who shall hear? But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them, but you shall have all the nation in derision. The Bible says God shall laugh at them. Some people were plotting again here in Psalm 59 verse 7. But in verse 8, the Bible says the weapon that God uses, the weapon that God used actually to wipe them out, was that he laughed. <laughs> if God laughs, you have to laugh. If God laughs, it is ungodly not to laugh. You know some people, if they've ever found themselves wanting to be excited, they think they're not spiritual. Some people have equated spirituality with, what should I call it? With looking sad. <laughs> Listen to me, if you give to life, whatever you give to life is what life gives back to you. If you sock, life will sock back to you. If you smile, just try it. After this, after this uh, broadcast, just walk out. If you, if you see anybody, just smile at them. They're going to smile back at you. Could it be, could it just be that the reason why life is not smiling at you is because you've been born in your face? The last time I checked, the Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You see some people, they, they do like this even in church. Why are you like that? I'm with God. No, you'll be shocked when you get to heaven that you'll be pulled aside for tutorial because God smiles. If God smiles, it is ungodly not to smile. But maybe you are looking at me right now. You're saying, Pastor Biondi, do you know what I'm dealing with? I can't smile. I can't laugh because of the situation on ground. Maybe you lost something. Maybe you heard the bad news. 
or you're going through a pandemic circumstance, maybe you could say, oh, my life is a pandemonium. I don't know what it is. But in Nehemiah chapter number 8, the people of God were dealing with things like that. The Bible says when they began to, when they, when they, when they, when they laid the foundation of the temple, the, the, the Bible says they began to cry. And the Bible says they said, this is not a day to weep. The Bible says those who were shouting towards the Lord and those who were crying, you could not tell the difference. Then he said to them, Look at verse 10 of Nehemiah chapter number 8. It says, go your way, eat the fat. In other words, eat luscious food. Drink the sweet and send portions to those whom nothing is prepared for. For this day is holy to the Lord. Now they're talking about a day that is holy. He says, do not sorrow. You could see the parallel between, you could see the, the, the synonym between uh, being holy and being joyful. He says, because today is holy, you can't be sorrowful. He said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Did you see that? Anything trying to take your joy from you is trying to elude you of your strength. The coronavirus pandemic right now, I tell you the truth, God knows you on earth. You are his family. Therefore, don't allow that to overwhelm you. Pastor Biodo is not corona. That is my problem. My business is failing. My finance is failing. My family is turning apart. That is not enough excuse for you to be sorrowful. Today is a holy day. Today is a holy day in your life. The word holy is agiasmos or agion. That means something separated unto the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. You can't be sorrowful because the end of that matter is peace. I tell you the truth, the end of that matter is peace. In Job chapter number 5 and verse 22, the Bible says you shall laugh at destruction and famine. And you shall not be afraid of the beast of the earth. Corona is a beast. They call animals beasts. Okay? That's a beast of the earth. Anything devouring, anything carnivorous, anything that is destructive is referred to as a beast. You shall not be afraid. But at destruction, and whether it's touching your economy, famine, you shall laugh. Laugh or laughter, beg your pardon, is a weapon given to Christians. When you laugh, you confuse your enemy. The laughing side is the winning side. Hallelujah. So you can never, your God does not expect you to bury your head and be sad and say, oh, we're dealing with this. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. How could we have comedian on this show? We ought to have comedian on this show. The Bible says in Proverbs 17 and verse 22 that a merry heart does good like medicine or if you're British, medicine. But a, a broken spirit dries the bone. You see, the enemy has set you up for your bones to be dry. They're not talking about the physical bone. They're talking about your structure. What upholds you. You see, you're, you're standing, you're walking. We can't see your bone, but that's your structure. That's what upholds you. When something happens to someone's bone at the back, the person gets paralyzed. The devil is trying to paralyze you in the spirit. All right? A merry heart does good like medicine so the next time you're laughing which is going to be in a couple of minutes and someone tells you why are you laughing tell them i'm taking my medication <laughs> because laughter does good like medicine like medicine tonight we are hosting someone i mean there's no better person to host tonight than this wonderful stand-up comedian a child of god is going to make you laugh in a couple of minutes but please receive with me on the elevator with PB for the first time, Kenny Black. Kenny Black, are you there? <laughs> yes, I'm here, sir. Good to see you, sir. Me too, me too. Please introduce yourself the way you do. I like you. I like the way you do it. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Montelori Kenny Peter Patoibo. But a lot of people call me Kenny Black. I am I'm a fine boy and single in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Why are you trying to copy me with this heart? What's going on? It's all back every heart. So you know <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've not been able to invite my barber to my house. That's why I'm just wearing this. How are you doing? Uh, I'm very well, thank you. I've not been able to invite my barber to. He called me one time. I was like, I'm 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 Wow. Well, I, I'm sure a lot of people will be offended if I don't let you share your jokes, but 
before we do that, please, before we do that. Yes, sir. We'd like to meet you on another dimension, on another pedestal. Please, can you tell me about your roots and your background generally? Were you raised in okay, Lagos? Uh, Where were you raised? Uh, I was raised in Ejibo. Um, I was born in Moshi, and the, that time here, we moved to Ejibo. Wow. 1992, September 30th, 6 p.m. I uh, the <laughs> that was number two before then. But I have a twin sister from a family of seven. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm a church boy. I'm a confirmed church boy. Um, God's Grace Ambassador. And I do music comedy. I host. And since the pandemic, I've been hosting Money Devotions. But we thank God for, for grace. Yeah, wow, so you've been it's... hosting Money Devotion? What time every yes, day? Sir. Tell me about it. What time? Sir, it depends on when I wake up, sir. <laughs> so, because <laughs> in our house, yeah, we gather, and my family has right now, so we gather everybody. <laughs> It's, it's not a small something, but let's say from 6 a.m. to like um, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And here in the house right now, don't be scared. You might be hearing something like, Wow, well, what's late? Who used the car to? The ones you hear is, well, Why did you do that flush? So you might hear that at some point during this life. So it's, I mean, it's been crazy. We thank you. Amazing. Were, were your family members in support of comedy from the onset? How did, how did um, they take the decision of you going to the mainstream comedy? Um, at first, my friends said no because I was still in secondary school then. Wow. Um, that was over, over 10 years ago, 2008. Wow. wow. Um, they felt I was going to be this, you know, as an artist, not even as a comedian. They felt as an artist, you must pierce your ear, you must draw tattoos, you must sag, and those things make you an artist. They feel that um, as an artist, you don't have your own life. You deviate from the kind of life that you live to a life that the society wants you to live. So they want you to do drugs, they want you to take alcohol as an artist. So I promised I was not going to do all that. I promised I was going to make them proud. I promised them that I will even be stronger in faith and in Christ, even when I'm in the world. And my wow. father said something to me one time, and he said, I'm going to let you do this, but on one condition, you are going to prove that you are in the world, but you are not of the world. And so, so I started doing my thing, and they allowed me. And, you know, at that, that point, when people will come to the house and tell your mom and your dad, ah, Oh, my, oh, you need to see your child at that event. He, as in, he killed it. My mother was like, my child will not kill anybody in Jesus' name. Nobody will die. I said, no, as in, as in, people were laughing and they were falling off their seat. They were showing them pictures and videos. And my parents started seeing the fact that I'm becoming um, a, a, a country record with, something to record with in the society. And they said, okay, come on, I think it's making a difference. And I started deciding, and today they are super proud of it. So they said, no, as first, but now they are super proud. I think every visionary uh, walks that path. You know, when I was going to start the church that I pastor, Koza, I didn't have the nerve to tell my father that I was going to be a pastor, particularly a full-time pastor. I didn't have the nerve because my father all my life prepared me to be a politician. So um, he really wanted me to, he really wanted to push me, you know, to do some things. And then... Uh, I gave my life, I'd given my life to Christ, I'd developed myself, and then I had received the ministry. So I didn't know how to tell my father. But you see, at the time, we were reaching out to cult boys, drug addicts in the city of Ilori. There were lots of people that were, you know, thrown out of school. We went to help them, help them. You know, you, did, you hear, did you ever hear, did you ever heard about um, IGMB? Did you hear about IGMB? No. No. Did you hear about IGMB? Never. IGMB was this A-level... No, was this A levels? So we help people to to go back into um, the six month course or nine month course, and after doing that, you were admitted back to two hundred level. And so you know, wow. people in the neighborhood began to talk about me and talk about the things we were doing. And one day, my father just called me, just came back and said, "Piano, come here. Tell me about what you're doing." I almost melted. <laughs> then I now shared with him what you know I was doing, and that was how he knew yeah. that I was doing pastoring. Did you start? Wow. Did you start out by doing comedy, or you doubled into it? Tell me how you. <laughs> okay, I was this um, as at, as when I was twelve years old. Um, yeah. I was this guy working with different gospel band. Um, the likes I'll mention some names. You'd be surprised. All those L A L A, Atori Shea, Darren Melo. I was doing backup artists for them. Wow. Um, yeah, I was doing some performance as at twelve years old. Wow. Uh, you know, so I was doing that. I. All I wanted to be was a musician with the band, you know, uh, play weddings, birthdays, um, events like that, church events. But because I find myself each time writing a song, I find myself writing a funny song. 
And when everybody is at home playing, I find myself I find myself being the MC for no reason. Wow. And if somebody is talking and trying to make somebody laugh, I find myself taking taking out of that that that, that moment and making them laugh. So one day in 2008, one guy came to my house and said, you know what, they are looking for an hype man to do um, host for a rally for Miss Ejigo. I was like, oh, let me go, let me go and try my luck. So I picked up the mic as we were moving and I was doing hype, I was mimicking Igbos and we started to about. And all of a sudden, the car broke down, but the sound was still on. Wow. So I just picked up the mic and I was just playing, playing around and everybody started to like, ah, who is this small boy? I was just talking and... After the rally, the guy, the guy came to me and he was like, we like to do comedy. I said, yes, I watched a lot of math and math. I used to be one of these boys that we stand on the streets at, on that, <laughs> at that bus stop where there is a TV in front of a mall and watch comedy shows. Like, ah, I can't wait to be like, Charlie, I'm like, oh, basket math is funny. Wow. And so the guy looked at me and was like, Kenny, try and do, try and um, look for a name. I said, what name? For no reason, different names started coming. The boy does boy, blacksmith, blacker than ever, was supposed to be black. <laughs> I just chose Kenny Black. So I got to his office and I, I realized that he chose Kenny Black also. And that was how I went on stage for the first time, August 9, 2008. I was shaking and they were still laughing. I was like, I don't know what to do. And they were like, oh my God, this guy is good. I'm like, eh, eh. So this is my true calling. So I started with doing just stand up comedy. And after some time, I decided to try the musical. Thing that I do at home on stage, and it became better. I got a ladder of vision than when I just talk, and I realized that this is my strength, and it's been working for me since then. And today, I'm, this year, this year was supposed to be my golden jubilee, celebrating 10 years anniversary wow. of the stand of being an amazing stand up music comedian. And wow. I look at my back now, God has done well for me. Wow, 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 <laughs> amazing, amazing. The Bible says the gift of a man makes room for him. No matter how yeah. filled the car is, the driver has got a seat. There's something you are yes. brought to the face of the earth to drive. So as you get on the driver's seat and begin to move it, the Lord will make room for you. Wow, that's amazing. Amen. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. The entertainment industry is really fast-paced right now. The way it's moving, I mean, it's really an industry. How did you become an award-winning comedian? I mean, 10 years. There are lots of people that have been doing <laughs> it. They've been doing it before you. How did you get here? Tell me. Okay, um, I think the three things I would say brought me this far. Um, okay, let me just, let, let, me not, let me not label them. I'll just say some things brought me this far. I would say God, the God-given talent and grace. Um, I was this person who was really, really hungry. Uh, was really, really hungry. I just wanted to get the mic and perform. So every time people see me, because I was smaller, I was smaller than every other person. So they just telling me to go to the children department. I got to collect this thing. I go back. I was like, what's wrong with this? You guys are judging the book by the cover. I can't do this thing. Just give me the mic. They said, no. I said, give me the mic. I can't perform. I know I'm not a Romega. But if I can't do this mic, I will kill it. They said, no problem. I was, so one day, one day, um, I was going to Muson Center to always want to perform. So they would tell me to perform before people come in, like the pre-show. And that pre-show, you might maybe be maybe, uh, an event center for like 5,000 people. And you're performing for just maybe like um, 50 people, not even the tight of the hall. You're performing <laughs> for, like 50, <laughs> for like 50 people. And as you're performing, somebody is doing until check one, two behind you. And like, oh, what's going on? So, but I just closed my eyes. I'm performing like I'm performing for the biggest crowd ever. Yeah. And they started seeing my, they started seeing the potential. Okay, this guy is really determined. He can really do something. So I always go backstage and stand, even if I'm not invited. So there will be somebody who will come late and they need somebody to fill up. Wow. So I'll just go there and perform. And that was as people that are putting me on platform, platform, platform. And I was not just, I was not just ready for the future. I was prepared for it, you know. So if I was going to come to Koza, I was, I already had it in my mind. That if I'm going to come to Koza, even in five years' time, this is what I'm going to say. Wow. So I was just waiting for the platform to come. I had the, I had the, I had, the, I had, my, I had everything in me. All I needed was just, to, was just for Koza to invite me. <laughs> so I didn't want Koza to invite me, so I would not be prepared. So as I went, Koza invited me. As I went, they were calling me and said, I celebrate you, sir. I said, I celebrate you, but I can do a defense flight. <laughs> I can do a defense flight. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was not just waiting for the future. I was prepared for it. And because I was determined, um, it gave me room to be consistent and to just get ready. And just when the platform, when the platform comes, I was already ready to perform. So just give me the mic. So if, if Koza invites me tomorrow, I know what to say. I'm already prepared <laughs> for it. So 
preparing for the future and not just waiting for yeah. it. One meal of this award in consistency, and I will say it's God's grace. Wow. I think it's just the same story everywhere. It is a smart person said when preparation meets opportunity, there is a spark. Thank you yeah, for thank you for sharing that with us. How do you handle when you are about to perform, but people you respect a lot were called before you, or probably I don't know what it is. How, how do you do you do you do you feed yet? Yeah. Do you Actually, shake? Yes, I do. So <laughs> I do. You know. <laughs> okay. You know when when. It, it got to a point I was like, I was, everybody was talking about me. So they always saved me for the last. There was one that I would perform after the grace. After the grace <laughs> <laughs> was, they were only, they were always giving me for the last. So imagine performing after the likes of Agudai, Alibaba, Okebakasi, Godons, Basket Mount, and they say, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on stage. Blah, blah. I'm like, you don't want to kill me before my time. Please, let me go perform early and go. And when I perform, everybody are like, Oh my God, man, that guy was, it, 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 it was different. So before going on stage, I'm like, hey, these people already raised the bar. So for them to keep me to perform last, all I needed to do was to kill it and show them, give them reasons why they, they, probably chose, they probably chose me to be the last person to perform. So I was like, ah, go on with that So there's always this stage, right? Because every time I'm on stage, I always want to do something fresh. Jokes I have, I have not tested before. I want to just come out fresh. So I'm just scared I had this stage fright. But God, God, God is a merciful God. Every time I hold the mic like this, the stage fright just I just see every senior colleague of my means. I just I just start performing. They would just look at me like, ah, look at that, you're talking to me I say, Ali, come here, how are you? I'm super proud of you. you know? <laughs> see me on Mugale, let me see how I can help you. That, that, that is the king of comedy. And the, the confidence just comes on stage, comes, comes on me on stage, and I kill it. Pow, 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 pow. One of the craziest moments of my life was AY Live in London. Okay. Yeah, okay, back I see. Alibaba, AY, came on stage and said, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to int introduce on stage the new comedy machine. This guy is going to wow you. And even Agodai came on stage and like, you guys need to watch this guy. At that point, if I didn't do well, I, will, you would <laughs> I, have destroyed I was going to, it. I was going to collapse. <laughs> so, and I was, I, was, I, I was the last person to end the show. Sir, so, that day, they sprayed me pounds. Wow. They spray me pounds. I never went to eat very the change. I kept the money for two weeks. <laughs> it, it was amazing. And I, those days I will not forget in my life. And I will not take them for granted. Wow. Wow. That's that's amazing. Very, very impressive. Now, have you been in the show before that people went ahead and performed and you were like, this yeah. is off the hook. And by the time they introduced you, what is that joke? that you normally would drop or you know that everywhere we shake. What is that joke? Can you share it with us? Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, when, I, when, when I'm on stage at, you know, at other events and stuff like that, and they say, and I can see this person killing it. At that point, I just have to go back to that one joke I know we kill. Especially if I'm at, if I'm at, if I'm at a gospel event and they say, can you come and kill? There is this joke um, that I did about, um, I, I think it should be one of, one of mommy, uh, mommy, this favorite jokes okay. about the uh, about, about the lady in the choir, and I said, you know, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I wanted to marry. My pastor said, join the choir. I said, pastor, I don't know if I can. They said, join the choir. There's a worship service we do. Just sing any worship song. If this sister likes you, she will reply you. I said, eh, no problem. So at the back, I just shouted. I said, you are the love of my life. I was indirectly talking to her. I said, you man. More than there's a word to me. As he heard my voice, she replied. I said, <laughs> I said, what? Then she replied, I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I said, check Google map. I look, I am lost. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's great. Nobody's greater than you. I said, yes. And after service, Pastor said, can you black? Have you seen me, sister? I said, Pastor, is a blind beat. <laughs> after service, this is that tough thing. She was like, can you? I said, who is this? I said, this is the lady you were speaking to. Pastor, if you see this girl, she was like the, I was looking for the flesh of my flesh, but she was the bone of my flesh. She had me a slide at the beer. I tell the beer was coming like this. She was like, uh, my, name is, my name is Jessica. I'm a coach. I said, sorry, no weapon formed against me. He said, I love you. Now. I said, no, I'm in love with Jesus. He's in love with me. She said, get out. I said, get out too. When she went out, I saw her inside the little dream about 
And pastor, and that's pastor, who is the owner of that car? Pastor said that is a car. And the other car is for any man that wants to marry her. I went to meet her. I said, Jessica, she said, what? I said, I have made you too small in my eyes. She said, what do you want? I said, I give myself away so you can use me. And that was the first joke I did when I came to Koza. And it was, it was, everyone was, everyone were talking about it. They were saying, come on, this is how people were screaming. And because of the way I was singing the worship song. So there's no way... When other people are killing it, I just go to that material and like, I serve Jesus. You cannot see me. There is nothing like being original. That is amazing. I, Kenny Black, you've been a that. blessing to people. Please don't go away. We'll be back after this short break. Please receive the gratitude. Okay. Okay, now. Uh. Can anybody here wave and say, God uh. don't do something you ain't want that person. If I like, I go tell everyone, so you they can't pay for me, yeah. For me, I don't go down like go loud, they say they must hear you there for me, yeah. For me, oh. And if I like, I go tell everyone, so you they can't pay for me, yeah. For me, oh. I don't go down like go loud, they so they must hear you there for me. See, for me, oh. Amazing grace, yeah. amazing grace. Yeah. But if you to compare with your amazing grace, yeah. I know your face, yeah. I know your face. Then one confuse me, but I know your face. Uh-huh. Amazing grace, uh-huh. amazing grace. Oh, yeah. To compare with your amazing grace, I know your face, I know your face. They won't confuse me, but I know your face. Uh. Amazing grace, yeah. amazing grace. Oh, nah. Everybody say, the blessings locate me, they can't relate The way you bless me, forms no be raised Manicking no, they move no be hate If I like, I go tell everyone, say you they can't pay for me eh, eh. For me, oh. I don't go lie, I go tell it so they must say yeah, you they for me, eh. for me oh. If I like, I go tell everyone, say you they can't pay for me eh, eh. For me, oh. I don't go down, I go loud it so they must say yeah, you they for me Not if you to compare with your amazing grace. I know your face, I know your face. Then won't confuse me, but I know your face. Uh, amazing grace, amazing grace. Not if you to compare with your amazing grace. I know your face, I know your face. Then won't confuse me, but I know your Everybody sing a bit.
That was awesome. That was awesome. What do you think, Kenny Black? What do you think about that? Um, Pastor, I, 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 I must say something about gratitude. Every time they do this, they don't make me work. I, I didn't know they were going to go India. I can't wait. Gratitude, if you are listening to me, I want to tell you something. I can't wait for you to come to India so we can rabba, rabba, hey. Rabba, rabba, daily virgin, rabba, rabba, hey. I want, I can't wait to rabba, rabba in India. Because I'm worried about brain. I don't know what it can. Nehi, 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 rabba, rabba, hey. Parista, gratitude, nehi. Wow. <laughs> But I think they love you very much because, you know, when they started the Indian thing, I knew they were trying to catch your fancy. <laughs> I swear. You know, when, you know when, when they went to the Indian thing, I was like, what is this? Where I wanted this to me. But I just, I just felt like singing with them. I went to the way to the amazing day. Amazing. <laughs> what is the next thing on your mind? Tell us, what's the next project? What's the next thing you want to do? Particularly with, um, this, um, with this lockdown, I believe that any smart person would have thought about how they can do whatever they used to do differently right now. So what is the next thing on your mind? What, are you, what should we expect next? Okay, um, I've been trying to do, you know, before the lockdown I was on tour, um, celebrating 10 years, taking um, this new set of jokes and the popular jokes that they like on tour, um, letting people see um, the Kenny Bag and the experience in Lagos. I've been, I've been trying to take you to Iloni, Ibado, Ubo State, um, Kwai Bomb, Wari, but we only able to do Ife, and Ife was amazing. We had over almost 10,000 people fill up that venue. Um, it was super, super, super mad. But right now that the lockdown has happened, the pandemic has happened, and we know that it is only when we go for events that um, we get that 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 um, that opportunity to perform. Right now, we're we'll doing online performance. Do I do now? My even host one wedding online. So we just jump. Well, I cannot refund because I've already collected money before the lockdown. So, <laughs> but, but what? But um, right now, I've been trying to do more of online content. Um, by by next week, I'm going to be dropping my first comedy EP, I and mean, compilation of all almost all the music comedy I've done, the popular ones that people like. I'll be dropping them. I'll be dropping them online, and also shooting some online content to engage my fans. Let them know that if they cannot see me physically, I can be online Kali, and they can enjoy the very best. <laughs> well, um, I found out that comedy is really trending. And yeah. I want to add, you know, we've taught people that they should have multiple streams of income. So I also want yes, to go yes. into, I want to add comedy to whatever I do right now so that uh, ah. we can but move to the permanent no, site. Why? I, you thought you can call us for the event. I can imagine <laughs> I want to start the event. I would say, coming up, Sherman is an amazing comedian. Give it a four. Piado, Fatay, but we will say hallelujah. No, laugh, laugh, laugh. It's not, it's comedy. <laughs> so it's my no works out. If I wanted to start, and okay. I don't want to just be doing comedy in my neighborhood, I want to go commercial. Can you give me steps I could take? Because there are lots of funny people who have original jokes, but they don't know how to blow. Mm. They don't know how to blow. How can someone blow? Mm. A lot of people feel that comedy is like an elevator. You just press one step and it takes you to the last floor. They don't, they don't understand that comedy is like a very, very tall building. I need to take every step carefully. Um, first of all, comedy is like a ministry. Comedy is like seeing yourself as a pastor. You need to know if you are called. You need to know if comedy is what you are born to do because comedy is the fastest exam you can ever write. You can write, um, I get the results three hours later. You can write where you can get the results that same day. But for comedy, as you are writing that exam, you are seeing that result. Because the comedy <laughs> is the exam, the people laughing is the result. So wow. if you are not laughing, you are fake. There's no point. It's really, really crazy. What, 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 what I advise people to do, first of all, know if comedy is what you are born to do. First of all, know if comedy is your thing. And if comedy is your thing, find your own uniqueness. You don't see it because Akmororo, his Apollo strength is dancing and you know jumping on the stage. You want to start doing what Apollo is doing. You can do what is trending, but using your own style to interpret what is trending. And um, being original is something that will keep you for a long time because it, it, there is one thing that has kept me 
so that I kept me um, long in doing this industry, it is original. I'm being consistent with my originality. So be original, um, be consistent with your originality. And if there's no platform for if you think there's no platform for you to showcase your talent, social media right now is one of the best platforms. They will discover you. No matter, you never can tell who is watching. And if you see any opportunity to perform, treat the opportunity as the biggest platform ever. You never can tell who's watching. I performed somewhere um, in Ibadan for Lab Matters, being I didn't care. It was the pre-show. And I didn't even know Ali Baba was watching. Wow. I would have just performed. I would have just performed because I feel like it was not, a, it was not, um, it was not a full audience yet. Yeah. People were still buying tickets outside. But yeah. I gave my best. Wow. And he didn't know Ali Baba was watching. And he gave me his card. And that was how we started. And I was able to perform at his event. Wow. So, Give your best everywhere. Your originality will stand out for you. Don't be intimidated because somebody is doing a job that is better than yours. Do your, you never can tell if people will accept you as better than that thing that that person is doing. And that's what that, that, that is what that is what has kept me and what made me stand out. Originality is key. We cannot price it anywhere. Photocopy is very easy. And no, I cannot perform like Alibaba. And Alibaba cannot perform like me. You understand? So there is something that is different between me and just too funny. There's something that is between just too funny and me. That uniqueness we sell you. So when everybody are saying, ah, there were comedians that perform, but that guy that sang, it means I'm standing up. So you can be a comedian that dance, you can be a comedian that explain with cartoon. Just stand up with your originality. It might take a lot of time. But those times are just preparing you to stand in front of TEDx speak and see that I made it this far because I did not give up doing the challenges. I don't say anybody, but I face challenges. So, yeah. How did you give your life to Jesus Christ? How did you give your life to Christ? Because the first time I... <laughs> The first time I heard you, I didn't know until someone told me about it. And I needed to be sure so that, you know, I won't be embarrassed by, you know, because, <laughs> you, you know, comedians can be, not everybody, but some can be off the hook. But I was comfortable. And by the time you were done in our church, I was so glad. I mean, the video went, the video went viral. I don't know. Went viral. Yeah. How, yeah. How did you give your life to Christ? And then there's a two part question. How have you been able to stand in that industry? It's not funny. How have you been yeah. able to stand in that industry? You know, I, I was this guy going to, after when I when I when I stopped singing with the bands. I was this guy who would go to praise night and dance. If you, I don't know if you've come across some guys at praise night that would divide the concert. They are being praise night in front, but we are the middle dancing. So when somebody is shouting, we are shouting, "Hallelujah!" Hallelujah! So we always, we always, there was the time the job, and the back we just shouted, "Nah, arise, you come back." The old church was divided, so it was this time, and the pastors were saying, "If you want to give your life to Christ, come out." I just came outside. That's that. Wow. I just came out normally, normally give your life to Christ. But I, I, I spoke to God, and I said, I said to God that if if this is what I'm really called to do, if this is what I'm born to do, and I, I will never leave you. That was the promise I made to God. I will never leave you. I'm a church boy, and I said to myself that I will not leave you, God, if I make it through in this industry. And everybody used to see me post on my Instagram page where I write, I give myself away to you, O oh Lord. Give me for your glory. Forgive me my sins. I give me a positive testimony. Every time I want to perform, it is just me reminding myself that I am nothing without God. And since then, I can say that I have tested, I have tested the blood, and there is no way I'm letting it go. And after my dad told me that I am in the world, that I, and I am out of the world, I was in us on the road one time. And Pastor Paul told me the same thing. He said, "You are in the world, you are not of the world." And that word keep coming back to me. That's why I am never ashamed to say that I am God's best ambassador everywhere that I go, because I wouldn't have made it this far if not for God. I wouldn't have made it this far. If there is one video that, 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 that made me more popular. It would be the video of me performing in Koza. Wow. And that video went viral. Wow. And that's to remind me that I am a church boy. That's I can right. be in the world. I can be at any place to perform. I can be at a wedding. I can be at um, a birthday. But I still have the My People ask me, how did you do it? Even me, myself, I can't explain. And if you can't explain something, and things are just falling in place for you, it is because God is your scheme of work. He's That's just directing right. you. That's so right. all you have to do is to surrender. I just watch God take, over, take control. So even when I go through things that I'm not supposed to, I feel like, ah, I don't deserve this thing. I see it as God telling me that you need to experience this thing so that when you experience the good thing, you can know the difference. And it can only be God. So I've been in this industry, and I've seen the way things are. 
and even my colleagues tell me that guy for over almost five years you are still trending in the industry you never fail how do you do it i say i can't explain and when you can't explain something it means it go direct to yourself so i am god's best ambassador and i'm not seeing myself leaving the church anytime soon i am in the world but i am not of the world wow wow now there, there are young folks look apart from god putting you in my heart to invite you i deliberately chose you for this hour because there are young people watching you I, i'm not old but for, for them i'm still like old school <laughs> and they look at you they look at you like well i can identify with this person and this young folks the y and the z generation they have a lot of pressure now listening to you tonight they're thinking okay so which means i can do things in the secular world i can do things in the world yet maintain my standard like daniel like joseph what can you say to a young lady, a young boy listening to you who is gifted? You know, these guys are so gifted. And somehow they think, oh, no, 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 God will slow me down. Jesus, what, what do you have to tell them? Please. Um, be unique. Be you. Don't be carried away. I used to tell people that celebrity is just a showcase of who you really are. You know, no matter who you are, if you are humble before you become a celebrity, celebrity is just a TV for the world to see who you really are. You cannot fake who you are. So when you prepare for prepare for the celebrity life, if you are someone that is shy to face the audience, start as a rule because Oprah will call you one day so you can know what to say. <laughs> People will talk about you and tell you that, oh, they will tell you this, that why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it the way people are doing it? But because you've chosen to do it the way that you want to do it, understanding how the industry works also, but maintaining your standard, you can, be, you can stand out. People, people I'm, I'm in the industry, I don't drink, I don't smoke. And people feel like, oh, it's a lie. How can you not drink and not smoke? And because they feel like you are, you are supposed to do these things. You are supposed to do this because you're a celebrity, you can afford to do them. But it is not about you being afford to do It's about staying true to who you really are. Because nobody becomes a star forever. By the time you become a star and you be a celebrity, and you carry that celebrity car and give it to somebody else, you are still who you are. So by the time you try to fit into the world, by the time you're no longer that big Kelly Black that everybody's talking about, you now find it as fitting into the real person that you are. So just be you. Stand out. Don't let anybody distract you. You can follow, you can follow some guidelines in the industry, but have your own trademark. You can you don't, you don't have to because because you are you, you can sing a song about a girl. It doesn't it doesn't change the fact that you're a Christian. You can be called at weddings. Ah, my brothers, are they going to go see me? Who sing nice songs at weddings? And still come to church. You understand? So it is you saying that you are in the world, though, but you are not of the world. You can dwell, you can be in the midst of um, drunkards, you can be in the midst of people that take cocaine and stand out. And still, I've been in clubs to perform. And I will, I will let me share one experience. I performed one time at a club, and there were a lot of, there were prostitutes there, you understand? Pastor, you don't believe that a prostitute prayed for me and told me that if I continue what I'm doing, I will go far. Wow. That, that uh, she, she don't know why she's telling me this, but if I continue doing what I'm doing, I will go far. God can use anybody. God can use a madman to speak That's to you. That's right. If God can use a madman to speak to you, if God can use a prostitute to speak to you, That's if God right. can use a drug addict to speak to you, no matter who you are in the world, you can make a difference. So don't let anybody tell you they can't. I am a church boy, but I still get invited to places that even church people might not get invited to perform. It is because I still carry the same that I am, I am God's grace ambassador. No matter where I am, I can only fit in where Christ is. I come to a place where it is not safe for so for for somebody that, for example, they say a, a Christian is not supposed to perform there here. But I come there at my form and I still do my church jokes and people laugh. It is because I carry grace. So that grace will speak for me wherever I go. And at that point, you find out that it is not just you speaking. You are representing the person that you carry, which is Christ. So where you are in the world, you are representing somebody. You can dwell any place, any year, any year. Amazing. Carry Christ. <clears throat> Amazing. Amazing. What could you say is the greatest influence? Because nobody just wakes up and become what you, you are. You mentioned your father, but what could you say growing up helped you? You know why I'm asking you this question? Reason is not everybody, not everybody can <clears throat> go to the places where you've gone to. Some people are not standing 
And because they're not standing, they are easily swayed. And so we can't say everybody should do that. I believe God prepared you. Yeah. So what can yeah. you tell us about your preparation? You know, how, who did yeah. God use to help you? Um, you know, growing up in the industry, I, 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 I probably, and I'm saying this for the first time. Yeah. I, th I think you mean, I didn't want to be. Hello, Kenny. I think you minimized your picture. I think you no, minimized. It's, it's not me. It's yeah. not me. I think it's from. There. Okay, yeah, you're good. Okay. You're good. We're you're back good. now. You're good. So I, I didn't, I'm saying this for the first time here. I didn't want to be anybody's boy. I wanted to be everybody's boy. You understand? I wanted to work with Alibaba, work with Basket Mouth, work with AY, work with everybody. And I was really saying thank you to my parents for teaching me how to be respectful. Everybody says Kenny Black is humble. But I don't see myself as humble. I see myself living the life that my parents taught me, doing the things that my parents taught me. My parents inspired me so much. My elder brothers did it at the same time. I started doing it at the same time. And it made me understand that talent will take you far, but humility will take you far. I, I was able to understand that talent is not enough. So my parents, I watched a lot of people like Two Face, people like Kalibaba, as big as they are, they are still very, very down to it. You can see them on the streets and take a picture with them. You understand? You can see Two Face in, in the place like Egypto. And they will come there to come and bread and egg. Or you might, might sit down and want to eat um, yama egg or eat amala. So I realized that humility can take you far. Humility can take you where your talents are never going to take you. You understand? Amazing. So it is, it's, I understand. It's, so my parents, I, I, I cannot say thank you enough to my parents, to my people like Alibaba, AY, Basket Mount, people who have remained humble, even despite the fact that they are where they are today. And those people really, 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 really inspire me. So those, I watched those people and I was able to say that, okay, I need to prepare for the future. I need to prepare that even if I get there, I will remain humble. Because humility will take me to where talent will not, talent did not take me to. Talent might not take me to. And I remember I was invited to host Dangote's daughter's wedding. It was me, Alibaba, Basket Mount, IK, Bovi. And I was the youngest in that venue. They were wow. both there. Wow. And I said to myself, this is not just talent. This is humility with understanding. I, I was working with the same sort of people I saw as mentors. People who saw that talent is not enough. You need to be humble. You need to be able to learn from a lot of people. And I was standing on the same stage with these people in front of Bill Gates, in front of, in front of the vice president, in front of everybody to perform. Wow. So these people really helped me grow my career. I'm able to understand that you can blow, you can do everything. But if you're not humble, you will fall because pride, after pride is doubtful. So I think that's it for me. Wow, amazing, amazing. You know, when you're fishing and you're fishing with a hook and a line, mm. you can only catch mm. one at a time. But when you yes, network, when you yeah. network, so you, you are fulfilling the proverb that says that if you know how to wash your hand, you're going to eat with the elders. You eat the elders, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see a man diligent in his work. <laughs> you will stand before kings and not before mere men. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm so excited to have, you know, hosted you on this show. Thank you so much for coming. You're a young person you listening to me right now. You've got talent in you. There is no, not even one person on this earth that got released to the face of the earth without a gift on their inside. There is something on your inside that God has placed there to announce you. At this said a room was full. Your gift will create another room for you. But you know, the yeah. person who put the gift there is the person that can fire you to where you're supposed to belong. You don't need to go into drugs, to be yourself. You don't need to join a cult to be announced. You don't need anything like that. Christ in you is the hope of glory. There is someone that placed the gift on your inside. And that's the person that can help you bring it to the surface. You are a container with a content sent to the continent. I want to say that again. Mm. You're a container wow. with a content sent to the continent. And I okay. want you to know that God has prepared you he didn't make you come in the days of Samson. He didn't make you come in the days of Joseph, the Bible. He made you to come in 21st century because he knows that he has prepared you for this moment. Will you fail God? Or you will make sure that you do what he brought you here to do. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be an evangelist. But there are pastors in the entertainment world. There are pastors in the banking world. There are pastors in the educational world. God has asked me to tell you, I have ordained you to go into the world and do phenomenal things. You don't need a title. You don't need anybody to ordain you. 
God has ordained you already. In Jeremiah chapter number one and verse five, he said to Jeremiah, I said, before I formed you, I ordained you. Before you came here to the face of the earth, you were ordained to be something. That's the reason for your battles. Every accident, every incident, every event you went through. The reason for those things is that the enemy saw what you carry and he wants to kill you before your time. Remember, Moses was just a baby when Pharaoh was looking to kill him. I mean, why will Pharaoh be afraid of a baby? Why will Herod be afraid of baby Jesus? Satan looks at you potentially. You may be there saying, well, I've not even eaten since morning. It couldn't be me that this pastor is talking to. It is you. You're the one I'm talking to. Let me tell you something. You have something on your inside that the enemy thought to himself, if we leave this boy, if we leave this girl, they will be a threat to us. So we need to quickly deal with them. There is something that you are that you have no idea about. I want to introduce you to Jesus. I understand how you feel about born again Christians because you've seen a lot of them living a boring life. Do I look boring right now? Does Kenny Black look boring? <laughs> no. You see, people's backgrounds affect them. Their exposure affects them and they hide behind religion. You are here to make a difference. Jesus wants to give you a life of meaning. He wants to announce you. Listen, I'm not telling you that if you receive Jesus, you will not have any problems again. That's not what I'm saying. But you have an assurance of victory in the future. You may not know what the future holds, but you know who holds tomorrow. It's time to allow him to chart the course of your life. Maybe you've made a mistake. Maybe you've messed things up. Have you been to prison before? Do you have a child out of wealth dog and you feel you've made, you, you, you thought you've made the greatest mistake? No. Never put a full stop behind the exploit of the enemy in anyone's life. Maybe people have concluded on you. God has not concluded on you. Someone is listening to me. One of the things affecting you is that you thought your parents don't like you because they told you we were not expecting children anymore. Your parents may not be expecting you, but God was expecting you. You are here on a purpose for a purpose. God has not brought you here to leave you in a limbo. You are here on an assignment. You can't fulfill it without him. And that's why God has done all he has done to make sure that I'm available for you to listen to me today. Will you give me the privilege and the honor to lead you to Jesus today? Would you turn this pressure into power and make history by saying during the COVID lockdown, I gave my life to Jesus. If that's you, I'm ready for you. All you need to do is to say this short prayer with me. If you can say it from your heart, out of your mouth, there will be a new beginning for you. Say after me, Father, I heard your word and I believed your word. Today, I receive Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he was buried. I believe that on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Everything Jesus did by his burial, resurrection, ascension, and his death, I received them in my life today. I received the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Can I pray with you very briefly? Father, I thank you for my brother and my sister. Let your hand be strong upon them. Let today be the first day of the rest of their lives. Let the old stop, but let something new start. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. There's someone who's just said this prayer with me. You've been having bad dreams. It's been it's not been dreams, it's been nightmares. God said, I should tell you, those things are over because the authority the enemy had over you is taken out right now. God is putting a mark on you and what used to torment you will now begin to bow before you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God has asked me to tell you that you are the savior of your family. You will stand out. Everyone will know that it's worth serving the Lord. Something you have started in your life 
in Jesus' name. Why don't you send me a DM? Why don't you send me a mail? Let me hear from you that something new has started in your life. Please call any Christian that you know, any born-again Christian you know, that you trust. Tell them your new decision. Walk into a new church. Walk into a church around you. Call a pastor. Anybody, your colleague that is saved, tell them about your new decision and they will help you. My name is Bionu Fato Imo, and I'm so excited that I have the privilege to pray for you today. God bless you. Kenny Black. <laughs> My pastor. That was awesome. Thank you so much for being a blessing. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. Having me, Thank sir. you so much. I said it to the people Thank that a merry heart does good like medicine. Can you give us one more medication before we leave the show today? <laughs> okay, let me do a sound check. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let me do a sound check. So there is this joke I plan to do when I come to Koza next. <laughs> yes. Um, the music I plan to do when I come to Koza next. Yes. And I said to myself, I must do it. The Please. devil is a liar. Please go ahead. <laughs> yes. I'm going to connect to my gym. So I was, I was talking about, you know, um, the kind of, the kind of um, feature when everybody is doing right now. Yes. The kind of everybody is doing, everybody is doing, okay. Yes, everybody is doing a song. And can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can see you. Uh, yeah. You know, so, when, when I, when I, as of three years ago, I said that Kirk Franklin, with, I said that um, Kirk Franklin will feature Topa and Abi. I didn't think that I was joking. <laughs> after that year, after that year, top, um, Travis did a song with, um, with, with Tim, Tim Godfrey. Godfrey, yeah. Don Wen did a song with, uh, Don Wen did a song with um, Frank Edwards. Frank Edwards. And it was amazing. Pastor, trust me, come next year. <laughs> and it will be for your glory remix. You I, I can like make this. it happen. I'm telling something you. Like <laughs> something like this. Can you hear me? Yeah. Who is singing now? I'm the only singer. You know, okay, okay. <laughs> now this is this is this is Tasakop singing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then somebody else will now come. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> put your wrist together all the way from Nigeria. And mama replies. Yeah, so much is also not come back. You know, something like this. But pastor, the one that will make more sense is the <laughs> women of faith come to Jigo to sing. Because they will not be able to sing because they must have sung all their songs. So they'll go and rent band the motion. Our oh, normal song, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading. They will not be able to sing it that way because the first choir that came to sing it, the way they already sang it that way. So they will not sing it in a Fuji way. Imagine women of faith singing, I'm trading my sorrow in a Fuji version. It will make a lot of something like Put this. Put that thing near your microphone. Put it near my your microphone. Women of faith. 
I'm trading my soul. I'm trading my soul. <laughs> Pastor, when you invite me, I'll come and finish it. <laughs> okay. We thank God for Kenny Black. We appreciate you so much for that. Well, very soon, we, we know that the COVID is um, rounding off and that we're going to gather again. Um, we have a new campus called the Guarimpa Church. Um, when we resume church, we're going to bring you so that people Thank will be you blessed. Very much, Thank you so much, Kenny Black. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you, you so much for me. being on this show with me, uh, Elevate with PB. Tomorrow is going to be another time in God's presence. Tomorrow, I'm hosting someone you don't want to miss. I'm going to share the full bio and everything on my page before tomorrow. I'm hosting Dave Martins tomorrow. Dave Martins, please. Watch out on my page, on Instagram, on Facebook for more information. Tomorrow, 7 p.m., the Lord is your strength in the name of Jesus. I know that your life is taking a new turn. The rest of your life is the best of your life. Don't allow any situation to keep you on the spot. Don't let life put, pack you at the corner. Let nothing kill your creativ creativity. You belong to the mountaintop. Keep elevated. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah in the sun, hallelujah where you are, God has won a victory. You're the God we worship. Hallelujah in this room. Hallelujah in this place. You're the God we worship. Hallelujah in this room. All the glory belongs to you. All the worship belongs to you. You're the God, you're the God, you're the God we worship. Hallelujah in this room. Hallelujah in this room. Hallelujah in this room. You're the God, you're the God, you're the God we worship. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 glory. Oh, 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 oh glory. Oh, 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 oh. Forever.
sing it again. All over the world, you're deserving of glory. Everybody say, oh, oh, one more time. Oh. 